What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Craig Thomas Show. Today, we got a real special guest. You may know him from the podcast, King and Sting. He's got collabs with likes of Mike Studd, Jelly Roll, Paul Wall. Uh, give it up for Austin Little Browse Pollard. What's going on, man? Ooh, what up, man? How are you? Thanks for having me on. Good, man. How are you doing? Where are you at right now? Are you in California? I'm, at, I'm in California. I'm just at the crib, just hanging nice. out. Nice. How's uh yeah. how's, co- how's COVID over there right now? No good, eh? Uh, we were just at the beach yesterday and it was like popping. There, it, there's really? tons of people out. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, uh, it looks like Florida. Oh, unreal. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that crazy. Everyone thinks it's like locked down. I think over the past like what couple weeks, shit started opening back up. It's like normal. Shit, everyone's out. You can eat outside. I don't really see much of a difference. But... Yeah, I'm from uh, I'm in Victoria, BC and uh oh, word yeah it's it's pretty open here like restaurants everything we're still we're still popping off over here but um yeah, man. when you hear about california it's just it seems like it's this fucking hellhole right now where you can't you can't <laughs> do not... anything and like everyone's leaving all the comics are you know exiting to the, like texas and stuff right it yeah seems... i mean it's really not that crazy everyone's just kind of like out at the beach hanging out and i think it seems worse than it is but we're chilling fair enough Hey, I wanted to uh, get right into it here. I wanted to, uh, a lot of people probably know you from King and a Sting. From yeah, the, the for old, sure. The white rappers contest they had there. Um, yeah. Want to walk us through that, how that happened, how you submitted that video and, you know, just that whole day. Yeah, for sure. I'll give you the exact truth of what happened. I was sick of making music and sick mm-hmm. of trying to be like just an artist in LA and all the shit that comes along with it. So I was actually kind of depressed and it was right when the lockdown was happening. And um, I was listening to a lot more podcasts because I was depressed and I'm just like, I need comedy. I (laughs) I need fucking all that shit. So I was listening to King and the Sting and um, I went to Chick-fil-A on Sunday and pulled in (laughs) Chick-fil-A on Sunday. And then I was like, Holy it's Sunday. I'm a fucking idiot. So I pulled over in the parking lot. Yeah. And they were doing that shit and I saw some people submit and stuff. So I just submitted one from there. Um, Did you write and it then, right, yeah. right on the spot? Like I wrote, yeah, I wrote it on the spot. Crazy. Did you ever think, yeah. because you know, Nick gets so many submissions, right? Like you yeah. must've got hundreds of submissions. Um, when you saw that play, <laughs> like, so when you watched, did he notify you that they were going to play it or? Um, no, I don't think so. so you I just tuned just, in and then all of a sudden I just like, tuned in. It was on there. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, how quick did it change for you from that point? Did you start getting, like, from that airing? I know there was a bit of a, they started to have another content, like, contestants on and stuff like that. But yours was by far the best. And, like, everyone oh, kind of knew man. yours was going to keep keep growing. And Brendan really took, like, a liking to you, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, how did it change? Like, what was the, give us a time lapse of how, how quickly it all changed for you. Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, time lapse, it was basically just, well, to be honest, I just like kind of got out of my own way and just started going, like just doing whatever was put in front of me. You know what I mean? So I didn't, I just kind of like, oh, this is the next thing that's going to happen. I'll just do it. I won't ask questions, blah, blah, blah. Basically like it started, I think over the next couple of weeks, it started kind of blowing up on there. And then Nick, Nick hit me up and he's like, he asked me to come by the studio and do it in person as like a surprise. Yeah. And it was just kind of ironic because he texted me the address and it was like two minutes away from where I was living. Oh, no way. (laughs) So it was just kind of funny. Like out of everyone, they picked the person that was like on the next block, right, (laughs) right down the street. Yeah. that Yeah. It's so crazy. And yeah. uh, How's it been like collab, like some of the guys you've collabed with now, like Mike, well, his name's Mike now, but Mike Studd, like I'm such a big Mike Studd, Mike fan, whatever he is now, like. What was that like? Did you have any contact with him or did you just submit the vocals? Like, No, yeah, I was talking to him with Brendan and I'm actually good friends with one of his friends out here. So we kind of were just like one person away, six degrees gotcha. of separation. But um, no, he was really dope. He just like cut his verse really quick and he was like, need me to change anything? And I'm like, no, that was fucking epic. You killed it. And he's like, he's cheers, so good. boys. Yeah, he's so good. So no, he snaps. He's like, he's on a different level right now. I really like the sound that he's doing and the more melodic stuff. He really found his shit this past year, it seems like. So yeah, I think he's out. That in was Mon- cool. He's out in Montana now, I believe, right? Or something like yeah, that. Just yeah, just Stevenson Ranch, chilling. Yeah, that, that place looks sick. He's in. <laughs> no, that looks sick. I yeah. want to go there. Yeah. Have you been there? No, no, no. 
yeah i want to go but um yeah and then jelly roll was really just like opening and he's like yeah bubba whatever you need man we'll fucking <laughs> do it man he was like driving to the studio his engineer got covid and it slowed down for a while he was like i'm gonna make it happen regardless for you so oh, they were all sick. just that's so sick it was dope yeah man uh, and you were saying so you were saying before you did all that you're feeling a bit depressed like i'm not i don't know much about you but you had some substance addiction issues right in the past yeah you want to do you want to dive into that at all or i know it helps a lot of sure. people when they hear about it right yeah man i um i got i have like five years sober now so about oh, five you, years ago thank you i was um i just got addicted to pretty much everything that would change the way i felt you know alcohol drugs whatever just kind of got me outside of myself right so i actually came to la to get sober which is weird because that's, that's, that's like crazy yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, it doesn't really make sense, but I kind of went like in the heart of LA and that's kind of where I found just this community that were just like really honest and, you know, helped me feel um, like I could kind of get it this time. And it was just, it was just different than anything I had experienced before because, you know, I grew up in the Midwest and stuff. I tried to get sober there and it's not really, right. it's hard, it's harder because you're like, you grow up, you know, you're around all your same friends and you get out and try to be sober and you just don't I didn't feel that motivated to stay sober so um yeah man so I, I struggled with like depression off and on and anxiety and drug addiction all that shit but I got sober and shit like changed and um I just really kind of started figuring out how to be happy and how to live life without drugs and alcohol um, but it still like comes in waves, you know? Right. So, of course, of course. Yeah. So I, I think at that five year mark, I was, which is when that stuff started happening, I just felt very like insecure and very stuck. And it didn't help that that was right when quarantine started. And I just like lost all the things that were keeping me distracted. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. I, yeah, I've struggled with my own addiction stuff, actually, but not substances, but actually gambling, yeah. and a, a real bad gambling addiction. Oh, really? Is, yeah. And it was, Damn. it's a whole different beast, you know, and it's, it's all sort of for the same reasons that you want to escape yourself. Right. And you want to, yeah. And you get caught up in this life that, you know, and you start lying to yourself and other people and it, it gets bad. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, yeah I ended up going to like a gambler's anonymous. Did you do like the AA route or? Yeah, I did. Mm hmm. I did. And I actually have been to a GA meeting before and it's kind of gnarly. Have you been? Yeah. I've been to one. Yeah. Did you have a problem with that or? I didn't. I just went with uh, someone that I was like kind of coaching, like helping at the time. And um, it was different. It was like, it was very real. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. it was very, it was very real. It was, it was different. I, I felt like an outsider there. I, I kind of pictured how people would feel if they came with me to like a meeting or something. Yeah. They're, they're like, I get it, but I don't really get it. That's how I felt there. Cause I'm like, man, this is, this is, this is a different level. So. Yeah. And I yeah. actually, I was uh, dating a girl who was in AA and she, that was kind of my influence to go to GA actually was like her, because I started seeing her meetings and they were over zoom and stuff. Right. And yeah, it was like, oh man, this is, everyone's just so honest and every, yeah, you know man. what I mean? Like there's no bullshit. It's just like, yeah, I fucked up. I did this and no, yeah. one's, no one's judging you right like you can just be yourself and yeah. yeah that was kind of a motivating factor for me um but yeah it's definitely yeah everyone's got how, their how, shit man everyone's got how are you shit. doing with everything now are you like good i'm good now? man i'm i'm fine yeah yeah That's it's awesome, been dude. surprisingly i don't want to downplay it, but surprisingly easy for me yeah and which i didn't think it would be to be honest mm -hmm. but you never know it goes in it probably goes in waves right so yeah we'll we'll see how it goes you know <laughs> but no oh, man good stuff sometimes yeah. it's not even that deep it's just like if you if you're good now then you're good and just don't yeah that's it. sort of how i feel but maybe i'm a minority right i don't know yeah man no yeah. keep killing it that's awesome yeah cool thanks man um yeah but yeah what do you what do you got for what's your like in the future what are you hoping to do with music do you have any like do you have any plans or are you just sort of riding the wave right now um, no, I'm just, I've worked nonstop on music and I obsess right. over it. So I've already got like a, a project ready to go. Um, uh, just kind of figuring out how to package it up and when to drop and everything. But, um, yeah, basically I want to drop, uh, just like a, a bunch of bangers, just like a bunch of like yeah. hard tracks for a yeah. while. And then over the next year, I want to make this album that I've always wanted to make, which is just kind of more of a storytelling, you know, kind of like deeper album about 
cool. even the things yeah. we're talking about now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think for the near future, I'm just going to put out some, put out some heat for a little while and nice. then, uh, and then make the album that I've always wanted to make since I was younger. Yeah. You're, you're super talented, man. That's the thing is it's, uh, it's so cool now with just social media and like YouTube that now like yeah. talent, just, you're going to get discovered if you have talent. Right back, you know, yeah. back in the day, it was like, well, you got to get, you know, you got to get a, a record, a record deal and you got to be one of the 10 people that these record labels, pick. <laughs> but now you can just create your YouTube channel. You know, you could submit a video yeah. to a podcast and then next thing you know, you're just, things are popping, right? It's crazy. It's a lot of people don't like it because they think it gets a bit watered down, but I love it because the talent just rises to the top no matter what. Right. For sure. I like it because it kind of just cuts out the middleman yeah. in some aspects. And yeah, I, I never had that view of like that it's watered down and stuff. I've, Either I've do I, always yeah, but, yeah. I've always just like seeked out new music that that's in my time period and all obviously like appreciated the older shit and loved it. And yeah, but there's always like new music that you can find and it never feels watered down. Like you said, it's going to be like the most potent shit that you find. If it's not, then you just don't listen to it or pay attention to it yeah yeah what do you got yeah what's what kind of inspiration like who i know it's such a typical question but no it's all good if you had a top three hip-hop this is one of my first interviews bro so ask me all (laughs) ask me all the questions i don't care top top three top three rappers right now for you dead or alive whatever your top three rappers top three rappers i grew up on bone thugs and harmony oh being from ohio wake up wake up wake up this that's the that's one of the first like if i'm being <laughs> yeah if i'm being honest that's one of the first people that i felt actually inspire me and be like oh i want to i want to like figure out how to do that so even though i may not listen to them as much anymore that's like one of my first inspirations my older brother was driving around bumping yeah. bone thugs of harmony Man, and harmony they're one of the with, best groups ever yeah ever. Yeah. yeah 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 for sure and um other than that like I mean, one of my favorite artists just in general is Drake. Yeah. 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 You got a bit of a Drake style. You got some melodies. And stuff. Yeah. I, I can see that. Thanks. Yeah. 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 I mean, that that's just me being honest. I'm not going to be like too no. cool to say that. Like that's I love Drake. Drake is the fucking he's he's influenced me a lot just from listening. Probably started listening to him when I was like 16 and then just consistently. Have you uh, have you seen Drake live before? Um. Yeah. Yeah, he's he puts on a show. I saw him. Well, he's Canadian too, right? But yeah, he yeah, was yeah. in Vancouver, and I was like a couple rows back from the stage. He is just phenomenal, man. Like the show, Insane. He, it's like he's so talented. And then also the production value of his show was just like blew me away. So Next like, level. Did you yeah. go to um, OVO Fest? No, 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 I didn't. Yeah, yeah, man, crazy. All right, what what's the third? You got to give a third one here. Um, I guess I have to say Eminem. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> of course. I mean, yeah. Of just like you listen speaking. to his new album. You hear that? Um, just, what's the newest one? It's, um, fuck. I think it's music to be murdered by part two or something. Yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I heard some of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't listen to him like on the daily or anything, but growing up, that was like one of my, one of my biggest oh, influences. Of course. Yeah. You know? how, how old are you? You're 29. Okay, so we're the same age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. So like the Eminem show and the Eminem show, like the first two albums, Slim Shady LP and Marshall Mathers were obviously amazing, yeah. but like the Eminem show, I was like 10, I guess. And right. I was like <laughs> a- asking for it for Christmas and like, you know, my parents like bought it for me and they're like, they maybe put it on in front of everyone and it was like, the first song was like white america yeah just like you're like, like what the fuck yeah you're like jesus christ help yeah, us. what have we done um yeah i remember my brother brought like bought the cd and brought it home and my parents found it and literally i remember them like taking it out back getting a hammer and like smashing <laughs> it with a hammer i remember that shit they did that with eminem cd and marilyn manson cd because no he used way. to like yeah. he used to be a big marilyn manson fam yeah and so yeah those are my rappers but to be like i'm all over the place with music i'm inspired by like even marilyn manson uh my one of my favorite artists is bon iver just oh, like bon Iver's, all yeah. kinds of ton- yeah. all kinds of different shit like growing up there was a lot of country influence and i right. think i shied away from it as a kid because i didn't think it was cool but right. then as i got older i'm like a huge country fan now um just 
the whole i was definitely like a like a scene type of kid the whole emo shit right all over the all over the place with music you, you a little like, peep guy you ever listen yeah to i love i love yeah. little peep Same, i love little I loved peep. yeah yeah I, I loved him but you know i remember the girl i was with at the time was like kind of thinking i was weird because i was a big fan of him while he was like doing his thing me too and i just too. kept thinking yeah. like this kid's gonna be special like he's gonna yeah. he's gonna be he's different and then i remember after you know you know people started to catch on like after he passed away unfortunately yeah, it's but sort of sad right yeah it's yeah one of those things yeah. um what's uh i gotta ask this what's what was it like were you big fans of like theo vaughn and brendan shaw before you met them and before you had a relationship with them or was it not like that um well what's kind of crazy is I, so i live in la so we would go to the comedy store a lot right like i'm a i'm a huge comedy fan we you know, me and my roommate were talking last night, like Louis CK is like all time, one of my all time yeah. top faves, Burr, all of them. But we would go to the comedy store a lot. And I remember this was like probably four years ago. We went to see Delia. That's like, yeah. that's who we were yeah. like, oh, okay, Chris is going to be there. Let's go for him. And it was me and my boy there. And that's the first time we saw Theo. Right. So it was kind of cool, like not to discover him on a podcast or like any of his shit. Right. It was just, we were in the crowd and this dude just walks out with a mullet, just talking <laughs> his shit. And we were yeah. like, who is this? Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of cool to like, just in person be like, who the fuck was that? Cause he killed it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. He's unique. Yeah. What's he, what's he like in, in person? Is he the same? Is he He's the, the same, same dude? Like that? I've always the same wondered that. Dude the same dude like, bro that's, that's what's so not cool. that's not a that's not an act that's just who he is nah, man. no yeah. yeah he's just he's just himself all the time he's definitely got that theo vibe like all yeah. the time just like you know come on man <laughs> we, we had a guy like yeah. yeah bro he's just himself that's why that's why it's really dope that whole that whole crew is like fucking awesome like we all kind yeah. of became friends in our own way just because everyone's super down to earth like no ego just fucking just dope people yeah, I guess when you first got on the show, it was um, it was Derek was there still, right? Was it Derek's? He, I think he was he was in the culture corner when they he like played my video, played it right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, then he shout left. out to Derek. Yeah, shout out to Derek. <laughs> he's dope. Yeah, he's a good yeah, dude. He seems like a good dude for sure. Um, and then yeah, by the time I got on there, I think they already transitioned to having Chappelle on. Yeah, yeah, Chappelle seems like a good guy too. Yeah. <laughs> He's tight. Yeah. Love is tight. Did you see that when they ate those uh what are they called? One chip challenge or whatever? Did you watch that? Yeah. yeah. Fucking took the bite like this this fucking big. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That shit looked hot as fuck though. I probably would have thrown up. Yeah, I can barely eat wasabi, so that would not have been for me. Yeah, that's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Um for sure, dude. Yeah. Uh, any anything you need to promote or say before we go here? Yeah, I would just say like if you were a fan of the music and stuff, just um, keep tuning into what I'm doing because I'm about to just drop some drop some heat, man. I've been working really hard and working every day. Um, I'm definitely coming out with some new music soon, so stay tuned in and and check it out. That's sick, man. Yeah. Well, I'm enjoying it and uh, you're crushing it. I see. I see big things for you, man. I'm not just saying that. I, uh, thank you brother you got it whatever it is you definitely got that so i'm looking thank forward you, to it man and i'll be uh i'll be following along so i appreciate you dude thanks for having me on this was dope yeah yeah of course man um yeah i like I'll... your setup you got the nice little brick wall back yeah it's just in my basement right now it's <laughs> oh yeah when <laughs> did you fun. start i started doing this a couple months ago actually i just i've like it's been a couple years where i've wanted to do something like this and yeah you know it, it just shit gets in the way life got in the way right and yeah I, yeah just doing a lot better myself and now i'm mm -hmm. like sort of free to do the things i want to pursue and yeah so things are going good that's, right now that's so. fucking awesome man that's what it's all about just yeah. just go just do your thing don't think about it just fucking I, do I just it. don't i it might sound arrogant i just don't give a shit what people think yeah you know? it's that's it's when so that's when shit starts yeah. to pop yeah you just i don't give a shit if people are like oh what are you doing <laughs> it's just like yeah i like it get over it don't watch it then i don't care yeah yeah right? oh yeah. Uh, yeah but uh Sick, yeah man. man thanks again for uh coming on i appreciate it for sure man thanks for cool, having man. me we'll stay in touch all right brother peace See ya.